James Webb has a difficulty. New images of Neptune, Mars, and the belt of Orion have been found. One component of an instrument on the James Webb Space Telescope is temporarily out of commission. One of the four observing modes on the mid-infrared instrument on the JWST had been discontinued, according to a NASA announcement. When getting ready for an observation, they saw more friction. Although the problem was discovered by controllers on August 24, the notification was made on September 20. Everyone dislikes it when space telescopes have issues, especially when it involves James Webb officials behind the project, though, are certain that it won't last long. Let's examine it more closely. Following that, we'll also view Webb's most recent images of Mars and Neptune. A device that supports one of the four observing modes on the mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, on JWST, exhibited what appears to be increased friction during preparations for an observation, therefore that mode was disabled. Is it really as horrible as it seems? We must take a step back and consider the MIRI camera's purpose and operation in order to comprehend it. The James Webb Space Telescope's incredible camera is its brain, and it gives us a new perspective on the cosmos. Our eyes cannot see the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum because it contains wavelengths that are too long for them to perceive. The MIRI camera, however, can. The red-shifted light from distant galaxies, freshly developing stars, and extremely faint visible objects, including comets and objects in the Kuiper belt, are all visible thanks to its sensitive detectors. In this manner, MIRI operates. But we need to look into JWST more closely in order to comprehend what the problem is. Imaging, low-resolution spectroscopy, coronagraphy, and medium-resolution spectroscopy are the four observation modes of the MIRI instrument. In a statement, NASA said, this mechanism is a grating wheel that allows scientists to select between short, medium, and longer wavelengths when making observations using the MISIS mode. It may take some time for engineers to resolve everything because they are still investigating the source of the issue. Turning off the interested observation mode might be the best course of action in this situation. NASA announced that they are taking a vacation and focusing on making sure it functions properly at the International Astronautical Congress on September 21. Everyone is fairly certain that this won't be a major issue and that it will be resolved quickly. The Voyager probe, the most distant human-made device ever built, had problems and flaws that NASA experts, some of the top engineers in the world, were able to resolve. So I have no doubt that they will quickly discover a solution to the JWST problem as well. Due to the fact that everything must be done remotely, it can simply take some time. NASA is unable to send the staff into space to fix the JWST, unlike what happened with the Hubble Space Telescope. The JWST is located almost a million miles distant from Hubble, which makes it impractical to send a shuttle because of Hubble's orbit around the Earth. Since it is so far away, it really orbits the Sun rather than Earth. Physical fixes are therefore not an option. This specific issue will require remote resolution from the web team. All other observing modes, on the other hand, are functioning as anticipated, and JWST is continuing to operate at or above expectations in all other respects. A stunning image of the planet Neptune was published by the mission during the International Astronautical Congress. Since the Voyager 2 spacecraft passed by the faraway planet in 1989, this is actually the most in-depth look at it. Since it was discovered in 1846, Neptune has captivated scientists. It orbits in the far, dark area of the outer solar system, 30 times further from the Sun than Earth. The Sun would be nothing more than a tiny, dim disk if you were on Neptune. It would be a dull twilight on Earth at noon on Neptune. Guys, the place is chilly. This planet's designation as an ice giant makes sense given the chemical composition of its interior. Neptune is substantially richer in elements heavier than hydrogen and helium than the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. Small concentrations of gaseous methane enable Neptune to appear characteristically blue in Hubble Space Telescope photos at visible wavelengths, which is easily observable. Both Hubble and Webb operate in separate wavelength bands. 
This explains why photos of Neptune on the web don't at all appear blue. Additionally, if you are not an astronomer, you might be curious as to why Hubble's image lacks Neptune's rings whereas Webb's image does. This is due to the electromagnetic spectrum's infrared region being where most of the light emitted by planet rings is located. Webb therefore serves this function better. The image of Neptune's rings that we have is the most accurate. We had never been able to see several of the rings in this photograph before. Except for regions with high-altitude clouds, the Earth is quite dark at these near-infrared wavelengths because methane gas substantially absorbs red and infrared light. These bright streaks and spots of methane ice clouds are noticeable because they reflect sunlight before it is absorbed by methane gas. One visual indicator of the worldwide atmospheric circulation that fuels Neptune's winds and storms could be the thin band of brightness that circles the planet's equator. At the equator, the atmosphere cools and heats, blazing infrared light. The 164-year orbit of Neptune around the Sun prevents us from seeing its northern pole at the moment, but the web photos show an intriguing brightness in that region at the top of this image. Neptune isn't the only object in this image, though. Do you see the light item in the upper left, for instance? Which is that? Triton is the moon of Neptune. It bears the distinctive diffraction spikes found in many of Webb's photographs and is an extremely bright point of light. The moon Triton is peculiar. It reflects almost 70% of the sunlight that strikes it and is coated in a frozen sheen of condensed nitrogen. This explains why the NIRCAM photographs make it appear so brilliant. In fact, it shines brighter than Neptune in this picture. How come? It does so because methane absorbs near-infrared light, darkening the planet's atmosphere. Triton's past is a complicated one. Dynamologists believe that this moon was formerly a Kuiper belt object that was finally trapped by Neptune through a combination of gravitational and non-gravitational mechanisms. Triton's odd backward, retrograde, orbit around Neptune may have an explanation thanks to this. This picture is outstanding when it comes to the rings. We can tell the Arago ring, the Last Sail ring, and the Laveria ring apart from the outer to the inside of the Adams ring, the best researched of the planet's five primary rings and named in honor of John Couch Adams, who independently predicted Neptune's position from Laveria. Additionally, it is feasible to detect the Gal ring, which is only one degree from the location determined by Laveria and Adams and is called in honor of Johann Gottfried Gal, who was the first person to sight Neptune with a telescope in 1846. From left to right counterclockwise, the other moons that can be seen are Galatea, Nade, Thalassa, Larissa, Proterus, and Despina. These moons are really fascinating celestial bodies. Despina circles every 8 hours and is only 27,700 kilometers, 17,200 miles, from Neptune's clouds. It is roughly 150 kilometers or 90 miles in diameter. It has an uneven shape and no evidence of geological alteration. Despina travels around Neptune in the same direction as the planet's rotation while staying close to its equatorial plane. The moon Proterus has an odd shape. After Triton, it is the planet's second largest moon. Proterus was not identified until the Voyager 2 flyby in 1989, in spite of its enormous size. The moon actually revolves very closely about Neptune, making it invisible from Earth because its light is absorbed by the planet's reflection. Proterus is also one of the darkest objects in the solar system because it only reflects 6% of the light that it receives. There are no signs of recent or historical geological activity on the surface of the Moon. Instead, a huge number of craters can be seen, with Pharos having the largest, with a diameter of 250 kilometers and a depth of 15 kilometers. Like Nyad, Thalassa was most likely created from the broken pieces of Neptune's original moons, following the upheavals brought on by the ice giant's conquest of Triton. Thalassa is distinct from other irregular moons because it resembles a disk in shape. As Neptune rotates, Thalassa and Nyad also orbit the planet in the same direction, staying close to the planet's equatorial plane. Due to tidal deceleration, Thalassa's orbit is slowly deteriorating and may someday collide with Neptune's atmosphere or be split apart and form a planetary ring. Galatea has an amorphous form and no evidence of geological alteration. 
Not to mention, Larissa, whose orbit is mostly circular but is progressively spiraling inward, may eventually collide with Neptune's atmosphere or be split apart by the gas giant's tidal forces to form a planetary ring. The moon takes roughly 13 hours and 20 minutes to orbit Neptune. Did you enjoy the way Neptune looked? That's not true yet, though. James Webb also captured the planet Mars's first image. Webb is extremely sensitive, and Mars is both close by and bright. This is the reason why scientists have to utilize specialized observational methods to prevent the condition known as detector saturation, which is brought on by an excess of infrared radiation that blinds the sensors. They filtered the light that reached Webb's instruments and utilized very brief exposures. The eastern hemisphere of Mars is seen in the initial photographs taken by the telescope. Amazing surface features, such as the Hellas Basin, Sirtis Major, and Hygens Crater, where the Perseverance rover is presently working, can be seen in the photographs, along with dust layers, craters, and dark areas. Additionally, they display temperature variations for various latitudes and hours of the day. Warm areas where the sun was nearly overhead are readily visible, as are cooler parts in the northern hemisphere and close to Mars poles. As you can see, Webb continues to astound us despite the fourth observational mode being disabled. We simply need to wait and see how engineers will address the issue. Here's where the video ends, thanks for watching.